Is this thing on? Hello there everybody and welcome back to Avant 3 here on the FTOG server where, as you can see, I have uh, started constructing the Zugrat on top of our floating island, but that's not why we're here today. I'm wanting to do a little bit more um, quality of life stuff for our inventory management and remote inventory and stuff. Um, a little while back, uh, Toddy the Body had done a thing using the player interface from Actually Editions, um, and he had that hooked up to power, and that would power all the things in his inventory. Unfortunately, the player interface from Actually Editions has a bug where it loses the connection to your inventory, and you need to break it and replace it to uh, to get it to do it again. Now, I'm not altogether sure when that happens. I don't know if it's when you log out or just when the re server restarts, but since our server restarts on a daily basis, or regular basis at least, um, that would happen all the time, and I would need to reset it all the time. So that would be a bit annoying, and I think Toddy stopped using uh, that setup for that very reason. However, there is another player interface from Random Things, and uh, this one, it's uh, mid-game, I would say. It's certainly not early game, because it needs a nether star, it needs an ender pearl as well, which is obviously not the most difficult things to get in the world, but yeah, not early game. Now, this one doesn't accept power, but what it does do is it accepts... Um, no, I wanted to get some... I'll use an item project. I want to put this up in the air a little bit. Uh, I'm going to put it there. In fact, I'm going to put it up another little bit in the air, just so you can see what I'm going to talk about here. Now, of the six faces, you'll see the top one here has a little picture of armor, because this face interacts with your armor slots. All of the um, side faces, um, they all interact with your main bit of your inventory here, that bit there, and the bottom, I shall wrench this off just now, the bottom, as you can see, has got a little sword on it, so that interacts with all of these slots on your hotbar. So that covers that. I don't think anything interacts with your offhand. I'm not altogether sure, but I'm pretty sure that that's not covered. Um, so I'm going to grab this down. There we go. Um, and I'm going to put this, put it flat with the ground and um, take that off. Now what we are really concerned about is mostly this, your the normal interface. But I am probably going to connect up the bottom face as well. But we'll concern ourselves with this one just now. Now, so we're wanting to keep all of the things that have RF charged up. Now, these power cells that I have been using for a little while, all over the, scattered all over the place, these can't actually have items um, pumped into them. You can put your items in there to charge them. If we take, uh, say, our drill here, you can see it's uh, got a little bit of charge out of it. Put it in here, you can see it charges up rather, rather quickly. That's fine. But you can't put items in and out with conduits, which is a little bit annoying. Um, however, one thing that we can do is we can use the item, uh, the Ender IO um, capacitor banks. These do accept items in and out of them with pipes. So we'll do that there. So we can now pipe out of our inventory and into this thing. That's great. But these things are going to be losing power when we're actually using them. So we don't want to be in the middle of using our drill when suddenly it pops out of our inventory to go and get recharged, because that's going to be really annoying. Um, similarly with the, map, the uh, storage tablet, we don't want to be in mid-use of that when suddenly whoop, it's gone, and OK, it'll recharge and come back later on, but still, you know, we're in the middle of using it. So I thought it would be a good idea if we used a battery. These things here, these batteries from Actually Editions, um, can be set. There we go. Charging other items in inventory. If we put it on our hotbar and hold this, and you shift right click, you can turn that on and off. Now, 
Um, this does appear that it charges everything in your hotbar or in your uh, main inventory and doesn't matter if that's on your hotbar, in your hand, wherever it is, it can be sitting there quite happily charging up everything. So we'll just turn that back on like that and that's going to be great for us. So what we want to do is, I'm going to grab that and that and I'm going to I'll probably need that as well. Um, I'm just going to break these just now. And in fact, that one as well. So I can come under here. So I think what we want to do is we want to change this. And this is going to extract and it's going to be always active. And that's great. Um, fantastic. Um, but what we do want to do is we want to filter this. So we want to extract things. And we only want to extract... So we don't want that. We only want to extract an advanced thing. Only want to extract batteries. Um, whitelist batteries, and we will match metadata and MBT, I think. Yeah. Okay, and we'll see how that goes. And that's only going to pull out from our hotbar. Okay, so we'll put that to insert and still nothing happening at the moment, but if we put that there, boop, straight away that's into there and it's starting to charge up. Excellent. So it's got a little bit of charge and it's, ah, it's just lost a little bit of charge there because it's charged up our drill and our storage module. So they're fully charged, that's got a little bit of charge in it. So that's doing exactly what we want it to do. And it got pulled out of our hot bar by that, no bother. Now, if I put that on my hotbar, see it's not going to get pulled out because it's not at zero. Hmm. Now, actually, I think what we want to do is, I think I want to take that out. Uh, I didn't want that to happen. <laughs> okay, these are the things that can get charged, so that's why it's pulling these out, right? Okay. Um, don't really want that to happen. Let's turn it to extract now. Let's take these out. And what I really want it to do is this thing is only going to accept into it. Yeah. We'll put it on in out and we only want it to accept advanced thing. Yeah, that. Only want it to accept batteries. Whitelist, and it doesn't matter the NBT data on it. So we'll accept batteries, but that's all. So if we put that into our there, it's in there. Excellent. But if we put our drill, our drill's not, and our storage tablet is not pulled out. Cool. Right. That'll work. Now, now what I want is on the extract from here we want chargeable item filter and we're only wanting it to pull out if it's less than 20 actually if it's equal to 0% so it's only going to pull out empty batteries so if we put that there nope not pulling it out if I set this to 50% or oh, it's already, if I say less than 50% right that's now over 50% and it still should not pull it out yeah cool so if it's equal to zero it will not be pulled unless it's equal to zero sorry it will not be pulled out of there cool that's good. Now we want to do the exact same thing with this. Chargeable item filter, 0%, always active, that's fine. But we also want it to be putting things back into here. So on the extract of this, we want a chargeable item filter and only pulling out fully charged batteries. Yep. I'll pull out fully charged batteries 
and then this is going to be set to in and out. So we'll accept anything on the in because this is only going to be pulling out fully charged batteries and on the out it's only going to be pulling out empty batteries. That should, I think, do it. Now, I've only got to put him back in to our inventory into this big bit of inventory. We're not putting back in here because it's going to just complicate matters um, having it put in there as well. So I think that might be okay actually. It might be okay. In and out. We'll make this a l we'll make that one the higher priority. Yeah. Okay, that should be okay. So if we fill this in, I think we are good to go. Um, and that can sit in there and happily charge up all of our stuff. That's that bit done. Cool. Now, I have something else I want to do over here. And this relates to things that don't have charge but can be repaired. So our diamond chisel in particular is one of the things. We've got other things that we can repair. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's have a look at that. We've got a flint and steel. Um, we've got packing tape. I know that's got an uh, uh, durability. And where was the other one? The other chisel. Where is our other chisels? I appear to have lost my other chisels. Okay. I'm not too worried about it at the moment. I shall see where I can find them later on because what we're going to do is I want to be able to repair things automatically that go back into our system and we can do that with some of this stuff with um, the routable containers or routable containers and by prioritizing things. At the moment our drawer controllers are the top most thing that things will try and go into. So if we've got a drawer control if we've got a drawer for something it'll go in there first. Thereafter it'll go into our modular storage. So if we put something before this that can receive items that why we want to be repaired then we can do stuff with that. So let's see. I have a modular storage container here that I'm going to put down there. There we go. And it has got a um, little module storage module thing in it just for the hundred stacks because we don't need it to be an awful lot and I have named it. Took it to an anvil, named it item repair. So if we go to our storage scanner, set this up and do a scan. We're going to have all of the stuff that we set up before, but if I go down and have a look, we will find somewhere there it is, right down at the bottom item repair. So it's the normal modular storage, but it's been named item repair. So I'm going to put that routable, and I'm going to move that to the very, very top so anything that we want, anything that we put back in the system, it's going to try and go in here first, which is why I have this filter set up. So um, if we have a look at the filter, you can see I have set up things that I know we need, or we don't need repaired, but we would like to have repaired. So we've got our packing tape, diamond chest transporters handy, the chisels that we use, and saws, flint and steel, and that glass cutter thing. So all of these things can be repaired, and we'll attempt to go into here first. Everything else will continue on down and try and go into the drawers, and then go into the remote controllers. Right? Cool. Stuff that comes in here will then go over into this item repairer from Actual Editions. I've had this for a little while. So if I go and put this, where do I want this? I want this, OK, 
kind of here. Actually, I need to put it underneath. So it can go there. And things will get piped into that. So we can go, OK. We will pipe out of here. Well, extract on the green, always active. It's going to go into here on the green channel and out of here on the red channel, always active because these things go in here and can only be extracted from here once it's fully repaired. Then we will go out of here and back into here on the red channel. Oh, no, no, no. I want to do insert there on the red channel. Nothing going in there? No, we're good. We are good, and there's nothing in there. So the that one there is that modular storage, and it's um, the second one in our list. So that one's going to fill up first, then that one. So we should have room in this one um, most of the time. OK, let's see what happens when I drop in a flint and steel back into our system goes in, and I think it should have already gone through. Let's have a look, because it happens quite quick. Yeah, we've got our flint and steel, and look, it's fully charged. So if I drop, where's something else that I, that this chisel will go back in. Now it's not going to be back into the system straight away, because it takes a while. This one's got a very high durability, so it takes a good while for that to uh, repair fully. So that'll sit in there, it'll repair, and once it's done, it will pop back into there. Excellent. I don't know where my other chisels are. I did have... did have more chisels than that. I wonder what I've done with them. Hmm. How peculiar. Shears could be another one we could repair. I wonder what I've done with my chisels. How odd. Hmm. thought I had them on me. Never mind. I'm sure they'll turn them up. In any case, I think that's good for that. Now, using this idea, I could have other modular storages because one of the recent things, well, relatively recent things, I don't know if most people have noticed this thing. By default, this is uh, golden, the little star, and that means it will it will automatically go into all of the rootable containers first. When you drop something back into the system, let's say these, boom, it's going to go back into the first one of these rootable containers that it possibly can. Okay? Now, if you untick this, it will go into the current container you have selected. So if I go down to this oak chest, for instance, which is over there, and I go and drop this dirt back in there, you'll see it's gone over here. There it is. Not one of the routable containers because we undid that. Now, if I go get myself another modular storage, do, 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 do I have the stuff? I am missing a machine frame. Okay, that should be easy enough to do. Let's uh, sort out a machine frame. Let's get a couple actually. Um, and we'll do like that. And we'll get a couple of these small modules. All right. Now I'm going to go ignore him. Um, if I do this, this is going to be cunning. You're going to like this. You're going to like this. All right. Call that one furnace going to get this one. Oh, you're going to like this a lot. Right? Actually, I'm going to call that one what it actually is going to be. Right? Mm -hmm. Right, we've got those. And now, I'm just going to set these up as if they're going to do something, but they're not going to. Or shall I? Well, we're, we're going to do that. Right, that one, alloy smelter, that one, sag mill. 
And if I get some conduit, you're gonna like this. I'm telling you, you're gonna like it. All right. I'm gonna do that. I'll turn that off. That's disabled. That's insert. And this is gonna be extract always active. This is gonna be the same. I'm gonna say insert there. Extract always active, and I'm gonna disable this crossover. So, and I'll disable that. There we go. So anything that goes into here is gonna go into the sag mill, and anything that goes into here is gonna go into our alloy smelter. Right now, this these are already set up that they eject out the bottom, and um, anything that gets sag milled or uh, furnace up goes into our storage scanner. Now our storage scanner will is already set that it will go into item repair or the drawer controller or the drawer controller or the modular storage. So it will automatically take stuff. Let's see if we've got any ore. We do have some ore. That's handy. Right, so let's be very wasteful and say, right, okay, let's go and put one bit of iron ore in here, and immediately it's gone over. It's going to go in here, and it's already away and into our system as a bit of um, iron. Now, what have we got in terms of dust? Iron ore dust. We don't have any iron ore dust or anything in there. Okay. Let's go put that in there. Gets taken out. Goes into the sag mill. It's a little bit slower because we don't have a capacitor in this one, but in just a moment. Ta-da! Right, this is not set to automatically output at the bottom. We need to sort that out. But, as you can see in just a moment, if I go and do another scan of the surrounding area, we can go and find the two... There we go, we've got new modular storage is there, named sag mill and alloy smelter. Now, the item repair is not routable. We're going to turn that off. Um, so, yeah, we've now got these. Now, if I want to, I can now go, okay, I'm out and about. Imagine I'm in the mining dimension. I've got a bunch of iron stuff that I want to sag mill up. I don't have that turned on. I highlight the sag mill. I bung it in there, and any second now, all of this stuff's going to get sag milled up, regardless of where I am. And then, if I'm out and about and I go, oh no, I don't have any glass, see? Probably do have. I've got 57 glass, right? Okay, but say I have no glass. I go, oh, I want to... I've got no sand. Um, but I do want to go, all right, okay. Um, I need to make some more glass. Let's go down here, go to the alloy smelter, pop that in. It's going to go in there. Any minute now. Yep, there we go. It's going to be on. And if I go in here now and go, I now have 58 glass. How handy is that if I'm out and about building and I don't want to come back here for glass or s smooth stone? You know, I've only got cobble on me, I don't have enough smooth stone. I can just bung it in there. So I'm going to get this set up so I can put these off and away to one side. Um, these will be routable if I select them, but not otherwise. So I will probably just put them... Um, actually, I might I might put them up at the top, because if I just don't star them. Let's, uh, let's put that up to the top. Let's put that up to the top. Um, top, even. Okay. So now... By not having these routable, I can just select these and put the stuff back into it. Cool. Very, very happy with that. And I could probably do that with other things as well. I can even make alloys this way. If I put, you know, gold, redstone, and uh, glowstone into this, it is going to make us energe energetic alloy. That'll work nicely. I'm very pleased with that. Very, very pleased with that indeed. Excellent. Now, I can check these things. If I go down to, like, the... Uh, what is the... Yeah, I can check and see what's going on. Can I? Can I not see what's in that? Oh, I thought I could. Oh, well. 
Yeah, they do show up as inventories, but they're not technically inventories. Yeah, cool. Very pleased with that. I'm going to make that a little bit nicer, and um, yeah, that'll work very nicely indeed. Excellent. And I think that's a pretty decent wrapping up point. So now, I'm never going to run out of power on my stuff. All the stuff that I want to have repaired will automatically repair when I put it back into my storage tablet. And even if I'm miles and miles away from my base, I can put stuff into the sag mill and put stuff into the, um, the alloy smelter. don't know if I'm going to be able to do much about this, the... Um, the uh, soul binder and the slice and splice. I might do something about the painter. The painter could be quite good. Um, depending, mm, nah, it's not going to be able to. It's not going to be able to change what it's painting it to be like. But yeah, that's a good thing. Hmm. Very very pleased. So I hope this has given you some ideas, people. And uh, if you want some more ideas, then uh, hopefully you'll join me the next time. But until then, have a funs. Bye bye.